you. We bless you. God, we come this morning standing in the gap for those who don't know how to come closer to you, God. We thank you for just this exercise of 15 minutes to spend time with you, God. We thank you for mercy and grace. We thank you that your truth endures to all generations. So on today, God, we pray for those that are lost. We pray for those that are in the world without you, God. We pray for those that are searching, those that are thirsty, those that are hungry and don't even know what they're looking for, God. You said if you be lifted up, you will draw. So we lift you up on behalf of men and women everywhere. We lift you up on behalf of boys and girls. We come standing in the gap, asking that you would do what only you can do, and that is to save. To the uttermost, save God. Deliver and set free. We know that you can do it because you are God, and above you there is none other. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. 
because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. He promised me he will
why do I need to forgive? We can't move forward until uh, um, if we're stuck in the past, okay? Number one reason why we forgive. Uh, you forgive because God said so. <laughs> Simple, right? God said so, okay? You forgive because my forgiveness from God is tied to my forgiveness Thank toward you. you. Right? My forgiveness from God is tied to my forgiveness toward you. Right? Now, let's begin to kind of break this down and look at it in much more detail. Because oftentimes what I've discovered over all of these years in ministry is that when we talk about this issue of forgiveness, it's often misunderstood simply because we don't fully understand what forgiveness is and what it is not. And so I want to go into what exactly is forgiveness, Right? Um, and so what I want to do is I want to start with what it's not, and then Dave is going to come back and talk about what it is. Here we go. Number one, forgiveness is not forgetting the offense. Okay? That whole thing, forgive and forget, it's a lie. Don't, please don't forget. That's how you learn. Okay? Don't, don't, ever, don't ever let anybody tell you, you're supposed to forget that. No. No, 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 no. I ain't forget. I ain't forget nothing. I remember everything, right? Because forget, forget, forget. For when you forget, you also forget what you learn. It's not denying the reality of the hurt, right? That's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is not I forgive you and then, oh well, I, I forgave her, so I'm over it. No, I forgive you, but listen, this hurts. It's not minimizing the seriousness of the offense. Listen, just because I forgive you, don't get it twisted. You were wrong. And you did me dirty. Forgiveness has nothing to do with how you feel. I can forgive you and still not be feeling you. You forgave them then. You don't forgive them now. You have to continue your forgiveness. Your forgiveness runs out. <laughs> and so what you have to do, you have to be, see, it's not, it's not, uh, let me say it this way. It's not committed to forgiving as much as it is committed to the process of forgiving. And that process of forgiving is so, sometimes, sometimes you have to do that every hour, depending on the events. Sometimes you have to do that every day or every week or once a month or once every two or six, every six months or once a year. You have to go back and you have to reassess. <laughs> and sometimes you have to forgive and re-forgive and re-forgive. And that's like when Jesus, when, when you know the text, right? And how many times do I forgive, Lord? Seven? Jesus said, how about 70 times seven? Right? What he was getting at is, he's not talking necessarily about new offenses. What he's getting at is, you may have to forgive the same person over and over and over and over again for the same offense. Not that they've committed it again, but the issue is, I, I didn't fool around and nullified my forgiveness at a point. <laughs> and so it's a part of the, it's a process. <laughs> 